Now, I need you to know that there's no other single entity that has been more instrumental and more supportive in the launching of the recovery organization in Cherokee County than the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse. They have been amazing. And Brian Kite and Emily Riblett in particular have shepherded us and supported us as a community. Their focus has been to help Cherokee County residents and Cherokee County resources come together to proclaim that recovery is possible. And so now it's my pleasure to, to welcome Brian Kite from the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse. And Brian, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Brian, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for all that you and Emily have done. We are grateful for you. And uh, Brian, take it away. Thanks, Troy. I'm excited to be here with all of you today to uh, welcome and, and introduce this, this new upcoming RCO, The Rock. As Troy said, my name is Brian Kite. I'm a person in long-term recovery. And for me, that means it's been over five years since I've found it necessary to use any drugs or alcohol. Uh, today, my recovery is more than just abstinence from drugs and alcohol. It enables me to live a happy and meaningful life. Most importantly for me, it enables me to be a father to my six-year-old son, who is amazingly still asleep right now. <laughs> and uh, I get to show up and, and be in his life and be there for him. Uh, be the father that I knew that I wanted to be, but I didn't know that I could be. But recovery has given me that opportunity. It's also enabled me to be a better brother and uncle and son to my family, a better friend and member in my community. I'm active in my community in a multitude of different ways. I'm a member of my local church where I'm a part of the recovery ministry. And also, uh, as Troy mentioned, I'm an employee for the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse, where I am the project coordinator for recovery community organization development. And I get to work with amazing communities around the state like Cherokee County and bring folks together to discuss recovery and make it possible for more people to recover. And there's a multitude of different ways that we can do that. And that's how we're coming together to bridge those gaps and allow people the opportunity to get and stay well. I have the pleasure to work for an amazing organization and an amazing leader in that organization. Neil Campbell, our executive director, has been the executive director for uh, some time, a little over a decade now at our <laughs> And she has done an amazing job of building up a peer workforce, um, a, an RCO network around the state, and she has just led the way for people like myself to have opportunities, not only to get well, but to thrive in recovery and to let other people have the possibility to do so uh, also. And it's been a pleasure for the past uh, almost two years now to work for her. And I'm gonna let her take over and share more about uh, how recovery has made an impact in Georgia. Neil? Thanks, Brian. Can everybody hear me okay? This is our first kind of test. Everybody, we good? giving me the thumbs up or no i'll give you a thumbs up i can i can hear you oh, okay cool hi everybody thank you so much for having me thanks troy thank you for cherokee county for doing this for lifting recovery up and uh in in a in the way that you are doing and we're really pleased to be partnering with you over this last gosh it feels like a long time but it's uh it it everything feels like a long time during this pandemic Hi, good morning, everybody. The year was 1982. I had just graduated from uh, Bowling Green State University with a degree in criminal justice corrections. And I went on vacation as one does after you graduate from college. I went on vacation to Key West, Florida. And I was walking down Duval Street and I met a woman, started talking to her and found out she worked for the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. And she heard a degree in corrections and she hired me on the spot to be a correctional officer in Monroe County, Florida. Uh, so from there, I went to the law enforcement academy. So I became a certified correctional officer, certified law enforcement officer, became deputized, and that started my 25 plus years in the criminal justice system. 
And that is me in 1982. I know. This is me today. <laughs> if you see me at the Capitol, you will see me with my mouth open, usually in my hand in the air, uh, yelling and screaming and trying to get uh, more resources for people like me. I am a woman in long-term recovery. And what that means for me is that it has been, uh, last month was 30 years since I've had my last drink or illegal drug. And I speak out about my recovery because I want everyone to have the opportunities that I've had to get and to stay well. And I can guarantee you, if it were not for my recovery, I would not be here today. And what I'd like to talk about just for the next few minutes uh, to, get, to get us started today on this uh, symposium, this virtual symposium uh, from Cherokee County is the impact that recovery has in communities, impact that it's had in my life. Um, because of my recovery, I'm a better mom, I'm a better spouse, I'm a better boss, I think, Brian. I don't know if he's going to, if he'd say that. I think I am. I'm a better coworker for sure. I'm a better person, and I'm most definitely a better grandmother. Uh, my grandsons, uh, Calais, Julian, and August are eight, six, and three, or four, uh, and um I, I am a proud grandma, and I one of the reasons I do what I do is because I want everybody to uh, know that if my kids and my grandkids get sick the way I did, that there's going to be a community that can wrap around them and say, man, you can do this and you can get better. Um, the, the, the job that I am so proud of, I mean, I loved being a correctional officer. I loved being a law enforcement officer for the short time I was. Um, and I love working in the system to try to make things better. But at the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse, this has been the, it's really not a job for me. It feels like an avocation. And our mission is to increase the impact of recovery in our communities through education, advocacy, tra advocacy training, and peer recovery support services. And we are, for those of you who don't know, oops, go back. Um, for over 20 years, we've been a voice of recovery in Georgia. We provide advocacy, training, education, and peer support services. We ensure that the peer voice, those of us who are in or seeking recovery, we assure that that voice is heard, and we believe that there should be nothing about us without us. Uh, Twelve years ago, when I got this position, we had one employee, which was me, and now we have 35, all with lived recovery experience. And we've helped develop, we've gone from one community organization, which is us, a recovery community organization, to over 30 across the state. And we'd like for you to think of us as the Home Depot of recovery. You can do this, we can help. And that's what we've been doing in communities. Oh, sorry. So we are, this is, this is our staff as of last December. We've, uh, not everyone is there, but we are a diverse community of individuals in recovery and we organize and mobilize communities and the peer workforce statewide. We just graduated yesterday our 40th cohort of peer support called CARES. I'll talk about that in just a second. But the way we see it, there are some major challenges for individ that individuals and communities face surrounding addiction and mental illness. And that's isolation, stigma, and extremely limited resources. And we support and advocate for the restoration and wellness of individuals, families, and communities. And around education, some of the stuff we do is we, we uh, in fact, uh, the director of training and Brian and I last week just concluded uh, working with Orange County, California, and how to build and sustain cultures of recovery. We also do training on the science of addiction and recovery to get an understanding that our brains play in this thing called substance use disorder. We, we talk about recovery messaging. You're going to hear some of that today. We also have a Recovery Month mini grant program. Uh, that says 2019, but we have in 2020, we actually have 24 uh, individual activities that are going to be uh, throughout the state of Georgia in the month of September. And we've actually extended it through October because we're in a pandemic and things are weird. And we also do Addiction Recovery Day at the Capitol. Uh, in terms of advocacy, we work on policy development, policies that are good for people who are seeking or in recovery. We will give training on how to speak to your legislators. We've done a huge stigma reduction campaign, and we are active on the national and local level at our state legislature. 
and national and federal legislature. For those of you, I could ask if you had a show of hands, how many of you saw uh, our billboard project in end of 2018 and all through 2019? We were, uh, the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities gave us some funding to do an anti-stigma campaign. And this is some of the beautiful people who were involved with that where we had over 400 million views on billboards and MARTA uh, stations and MARTA trains and buses over a year and a half period. We're really proud of this. Um, these are, you can go to our website or you can go to georgiarecovers.org and see and hear these beautiful people uh, talk about their recovery and what has helped them. What we're trying to do is show that, uh, as Troy said earlier, that recovery is real, it's out there, and it's possible for everyone. And this is just one more billboard. We love Tatanisha. I don't know if she's on today, but it's a beautiful billboard of hers. She was all over the city of Atlanta. And then if you don't think that recovery can have an impact, um, here's more proof. This is uh, about 1,200 people in recovery we had at the state capitol last January. We're going to invite you to come again uh, this coming January if we're able to, to do it uh, in person. If not, we'll do it socially distanced or we'll do it uh, on a webinar. But we will have people coming, learning, talking to their legislators. We had the governor speak, various legislators, the attorney general of Georgia, uh, we invite all people who we know have an impact on what we do. Uh, and you may or may have not heard, we had a, 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 a bill passed this past legislative session. It was just signed into the law by Governor Kemp that we will have a Georgia Recovers license plate available in the next few months. We're going to start a campaign where we have, um, where you can actually ride around with your vehicle with a Recovery is Real Georgia Recovers um, uh, license plate. If you don't get one, I'll come out and haunt you. You should have one. And so some of the training we do, CARES Academy, monthly webinars, all of these things that we that um, you can find out about on our website. The cornerstone of what we do is our CARES training. As I, as I said before, uh, we have 780-ish individuals in Georgia who have been trained on the, peer, the CARES way and our peer recovery and recovery coaching uh, training that we do that lasts for a week. All of this information about all of these things can be developed or can be seen on our website. So one of the things, um, I'm going to move toward this, is talk about what Brian and Emily, as Troy said, Brian and Emily, who've been working with him and uh, their leader, their director, Jean Conroy, what they do is develop, go out into the community. So we have this strong peer workforce and we develop peer-led recovery organizations throughout the state. We help organize uh, recovery conversations. We plan and host these things, these recovery symposiums, uh, and we foster collaborative relationships so we can keep developing this and spread, sort of become a hub in a local community for recovery. We want, we need recovery, we need communities to be recovery focused and our team helps to do that. So, um, we have listening sessions, we cultivate recovery champions, and I want to give a shout out to all of the folks in Cherokee County who are willing to stand up and say, hey, I'm in recovery and I want to help. That's not easy. There's huge stigma and discrimination still in our communities around addiction, but thank you for standing up and doing what you do. We have listening sessions. Our strength is the way we listen. We believe that everyone should have an opportunity to recover and that we aren't out there to fix anybody. We're just out there to listen, that people don't want to be fixed. They just want to be heard. So we'll help plan these symposiums. They'll have the symposiums like today. And then afterwards, help your community vision where you want to go with this, because each RCO is different. Each uh, recovery community organization is different. We usually have these as weekend events, as you can see, Saturday morning. Um, yes, I could possibly be at my spin class, but I'm not. I'm here with y'all because I love y'all, and this is, this is where the action is. We usually have it four hours or less. We have speakers who come who are from multiple pathways of recovery. Not everybody gets well the same way at the same time. We have local politicians. We actually had a, 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 a symposium down in southeast Georgia and the sheriff admitted he was in recovery for, uh, he, he didn't admit, he came out and said, I am in recovery. I've been in recovery for over 25 years. It was really amazing. So 
um, what we want to do is help build peer leadership in your communities and develop and enhance these relationships to grow our allies and to grow support for this thing called recovery in your communities. And then we see these beautiful organizations like Cherokee start to emerge. And the, this is how, this is who, what we've been able to do. So we're really proud of this. Um, we, let's see, we have Cherokee on here, Brian, or is it, I, we, do we have, we have to add more. We're always adding more to this, but we have um, from here, these folks who have emerged, there are 16 of these who, who were funded in 2018 by the Georgia legislature who actually get money from the state. So we're really proud of that to be able to advocate to have so many folks serve. What I, oh, there it is. <laughs> At the bottom, perfect, thank you. We have 32 now. Um, and these are just some pictures, uh, beautiful pictures from all over when we could be together without a mask. I don't know about y'all, I get nervous when I see people without a mask on it, at, in here, but um, that was before we had this hit. But what I wanna focus on just for two more seconds and I'm gonna wrap it up is, so we have this, all these folks getting together. We have people in communities speaking out about their recovery. And this is how many folks we are serving. This is our addiction recovery support centers, those 16 that I talked about that are funding. We are, we are seeing thousands, literally 14,000 individual, 14,000 total services a month, which is, uh, reflects about 4,000 individuals a month that are be, being served in Georgia in recovery community organizations. That, that's the impact of recovery. That's what I wanna hammer home to you that we are actually out there doing events and trainings and recovery support services, help, helping people stay well. Recovery is public safety. Recovery means that we have jobs, that we have something meaningful to do during the day. It means we have something to do uh, a date on Friday night. We have good things happening in our communities. That's what this is about. And that's why you're here today to support this. So I'm just going to go past this because I don't have time. What we want you to know, too, is that if you are struggling and you need help and you want support, recovery support, one of the things that the council is doing now, we've had to pivot to these uh, virtual meetings, is we do, we have Spanish speaking meetings twice a week. On, we have Tuesdays at 12 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. We're doing Spanish speaking meetings. Thursdays at noon, we do an LGBT cube meeting and twice a day, seven days a week, 10 o'clock and 7, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., we have virtual all recovery meetings. We had 44 people, y'all, on a virtual all recovery meeting last night, I checked. We have 44 people signing in, getting support from their homes, getting, uh, that's, the, that's the impact that recovery is having. Not only, we actually had a bunch of people from Massachusetts signing on last night. So not only is the impact of recovery being, your recovery being felt in Georgia, it's all over the country. So I just wanna say we need to have the maximum impact. We need to keep talking about this. We had a gut punch earlier last year when our budgets were threatened, but y'all stepped up, everybody around the state stepped up, made phone calls, got with our legislators, got that funding restored, but we don't want that to happen again. We wanna say Cherokee County needs funding and uh, Bartow needs funding and the immigrant and refugee communities need funding for this. It is a good way to show our impact of recovery as these recovery community organizations. This is impact that matters. This is your voices. This is us standing up and saying, I'm in recovery and I want to help. So I just want to thank you. Thank you, Troy. I'm looking forward to the rest of the morning. Hope I didn't take too much time. Um, you can please connect with us, connect with me. Uh, at, there's my email. We're on Facebook. We're on InstaFace. We're on all of that. But I, don't, I don't know. You know what to call it. Uh, you InstaFace. We're on all of those platforms. Uh, connect with us. Connect with The Rock. And I am so glad to be here. Thank you, Troy. I'll turn it back to you. Neil, thank you so much. And uh, again, let me just say your organization has been so helpful. Brian and Emily, uh, have been amazing and just thank you so much for the investment you've made in Cherokee County and we here at Cherokee County are excited uh, because we know that recovery is possible in 